So is there any special announcements you would like to make? Well, I think we ought to tell everybody we're going to go live next week on September 8th. At, Ooh. Uh, yeah, 5, 5 p.m. Pacific. That would be 7 Central and 8 Eastern. And if you're in other parts of the world, please, hopefully that's enough information to figure it out. So we, we haven't got to go live. We only did that one other time, right? So this will be unfiltered, unedited, bloopers yep. included. <laughs> so. Absolutely. And there, there's going to be somewhat of an announcement. It just won't be on YouTube because of the links and everything, because it's a video collaboration. So... We're going to try to find something to work out, but it won't be on YouTube um, as a, an announcement from a week from now, you know, like a scheduled event. Um, we will go live. It'll, it will be se September 8th and 7 p.m. Central Time and then 5 p.m. Your Eastern? I'm Pacific. Oh, okay. Pacific. So, um, but yeah, we, we're going to go live again since a lot of people enjoyed it and see what happens. Plus, we got more subscribers this go around. So. Yeah, we want to get everybody together for a big mm -hmm. family reunion. Yep. So we'll, we'll do something. We'll get some questions from the audience. So if you have you know, a question that's for the whole, the audience, the collective, you know, nothing too personal. Um, just keep that in mind so when we go live that uh, you have something that you would like to share, certain topic, certain subject. So I know I like to ask a lot of questions, but uh, some things I'm like, some stuff I already think I know, but maybe the collective might not know about it, so. We've done that a bunch of times now where we think we know what the answer is. And that's always a fun surprise for me when I think I know what the answer is and that's not what comes out of my mouth. That is true, it has <laughs> happened. Yep, so. We never know. Yep. Day, okay? So shall I go get Daniel and we'll get started? Yep. Go get the whole crew. Bringing them in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get this ball rolling. We are here. Gang's all here, as they say. Mm. And it is wonderful to see everyone again in this way. It's been a little while since we've done a video like this with you. And so it is fun to get together and to feel the energy of the collective of those who are watching. So hello to everyone. Hello, hello. Is this Daniel? Yes, this is Daniel and this is the Imperial Group. It is, it is you said bring the gang. So we brought the gang. We are all here. We got plenty of room. <laughs> Tracy, Very good. For yourself as she's moving over in her energetic body, <laughs> making room for everyone. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, do you happen to have any messages you would like to share for the YouTube collective? Well, we would love to scan that audience for you and just bring everybody's energy in. We enjoy doing that. And as we scan and look, uh, we are seeing that some people, some of you who are listening, and we hope to catch a few of you who are new to the group, but we see that some of you who are listening are starting to really feel the weight of the energy that is going on right now. It feels a little heavy. It feels a little more dense. Uh, you may be feeling tired, may be feeling unmotivated. You may be feeling a little bit... Um, like your feet are stuck in sand. You're not able to move forward. What is going on? Why is everything so stagnant? It just feels mm, humdrum. Yes, those would be good words to use. You're, you're in the, uh, the low of your swing. And so we want you to know that this is soon going to shift for you. This is going to move into a different direction. For those of you who are feeling like you can't get your foot forward, no matter how much you try, you just can't get that foot forward that it is mm, you're in a time of lessons and learning and purging and extracting old energy and with that with that happening mm, especially for the impasse as everyone is extracting and purging that old energy and shaking that off 
for those of you who are very sensitive to those energies, you are feeling the weight of that. You are feeling the weight of the collective. So right now with us, we want to call in your councils. Please do that with us in the highest and best good for everyone involved. We call in the councils. We ask them to surround the people, surround each and every one of you. As you're all calling in your individual councils, we want you to cut the cords to that which is not yours. That is not your energy to carry. Cut the cords, feel it lifting off of you. Just imagine in your mind's eye this this heavy weight that just gets lifted off of you. It's not yours to carry. And there are a few of you who are, are starting to develop some back pain from this in the upper back, right between the shoulder blades. We can feel the pain is starting to mm, work its way into the muscle structure there. And we just want to move in some beautiful light energy into the muscle structure. And again, just ask for that, all that energy to be diffused and moved off of you, transmuted, and we just send light and prayers to everyone who is in a desperate place of needing some answers, in a desperate place of needing something to shift or change or to develop something to move forward, the stagnant energy to move. And so we call it in for each and every one of you. Your prayers are answered. We call it in. Your prayers are answered as we all agree. So it shall be done, as they say. And we want you all to just feel this energy lift off. And that was quite a large number of you actually that are listening. We'd say at least a third of the group was feeling this energy of heaviness. And so we do want to say, just keep on calling it in as lifted off of you. It's not yours to carry. You are a light being, you are a beautiful beacon of light. And we need that. It is like when somebody unscrewed the light bulb, we need the light bulb screwed back in and so that you can shed the light. And, and that is what we want to help you do. We want you to go back into your joy. We want you to go back into your place of mm, feeling and experiencing life as a, as a very exciting adventure for you to be in, something to partake in, something to enjoy, something to live. And so we want you to live your lives. We want you to be excited about tomorrow and the next day and the next day. What will it bring? And put that light bulb back in place. Let's turn those lights back on and shed those lights everywhere. And, and as you become these bright beacons of light, you, you will raise the frequency of all those around you. If you have family members that you notice this is happening for, please advocate for them. Go in and ask them in your mind, may we, may we work with you to cut these cords to that which is not yours to carry. Heal the collective, heal the collective. We have groups of you that are here to work on those grids of the collective. And we remind you that it is wonderful if you could set intention daily. And that is really for everyone listening. Set intentions daily to send healing up into those, those collective grids of, of our consciousness. That which touches all. If you could send healing to that which touches all, how beautiful is that? You can send healing to every person on this planet. And maybe we might even say send double that energy to the enemies, right? To those who need it most, those who have the darkest hearts and move that energy off of them as we get a collective of people sending white light and energy and frequencies and whatever color resonates with you, whatever frequency resonates with you, and you're sending it into that grid and it's moving into the darkness. How powerful is that to get everyone doing that at the same time and just setting the intention for that beautiful shift of energy for this planet. Lots of energy shifting in this planet. And we do want to ask Jason, do you have any questions before we keep talking? Not at this moment. I'm kind of waiting for something juicy to, to show we're going, up. We're going to dig for something juicy so that we can make Jason happy because he's one, one bright light as well. That if we can make him happy with juicy bits, then, then that is going to be good. It can be shared with everyone watching. So what we want to say to all of you is there has been tremendous shifts, tremendous shifts, but not without its, mm, not without its battle cries, right? Not without its, its demons coming in and, and fighting the good fight to, to really tear everyone down. And so some of you have been living in this beautiful place of bliss. Things are going well, things are going good, and things are moving forward, lots of going on. But there are, has been so many of you that have been going through the trials going through the obstacle courses, as one might say, to just try to survive and, you know, work and, and make a living and pay the bills and keep it going. Mm. There has been some of you who have, have, have experienced loss, loss in many different ways, loved ones, 
uh, homes, cars, whatever it might be, material items. You're grieving, your, your soul is weeping for that which it is, is clearing away and for the loss of loved ones as that is also quite a, a pull at the heart. There had been many that transitioned during the uh, lion's gate, during that open window of that lion's gate through, I believe it was 12 days that that frequency was upon you. And a lot of people experienced loved ones exiting at that time. There was a gateway that they, they were holding on to their, mm, their energy until they could, or their essence, until that lion's gate opened and then they exited out. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting thing to experience. And many of you have had that experience where loved ones have crossed or you have felt the energy of the lion's gate in August. And we say to you that that was, mm, it was part of their plan. It was part of their exit and their strategy. They wanted to go at that time. and. And maybe it happened sudden and maybe you found out on Monday that someone was sick and by Friday they were gone and it was happening fast. And we know that that has been very hard on a lot of you. And we just want to, again, send you love, send you support, send you the energy and the frequencies you need to just hold you and support you in this time. It is a very, very big time of transitions, of, of, moving and transmuting yourself into something else, molding yourselves into something different than what you have been. And your, your little butterflies coming out of the chrysalis scenarios are really, really going through their expansion right now. <clears throat> the, the transformation that takes place in that chrysalis is not always easy. And so you can think of the, as the COVID, uh, as the virus as being the chrysalis. Everybody is confined. Everybody is in these little chrysalis uh, cocoons where they're not able to live life as they used to. And yes, in some areas that is lightened up and some it has not. Everyone's still wearing the mask when they're in public. Everyone is still experiencing some isolation. They're not able to go to movie theaters or concerts or <clears throat> other forms of gatherings that would bring in multiple people and celebrations, weddings and anniversary parties and birthday parties and so on. And it is really changing a lot about the way we interact with each other, but it's also giving each individual that inner journey, that, mm, that quest within, making you think a little bit more about life and when is life going to go back to the way it was? And we say to you, it never will. It's going to just get better, but it's not going to go back to the way it was, but your freedoms, your freedoms will return as you, uh, as you all collectively expect them to, but how you interact in those freedoms will be different. And you'll start to appreciate those freedoms even more and even more as time goes on in your chrysalis, as you're moving through and morphing through this change within yourself take the time to pause and go within and check in and ask yourself and your higher self, what is it that I need today? Councils, what is it that I need today? How can I move through this day in the best way possible? And as always, we encourage you to be the best version of yourself. And the best version of yourself is however you're showing up today. If you have good intentions, but you're, you're feeling sad, then that's the best version of yourself that you can bring today. And it's okay. Every day you are waking up to, to be in this body that you are in. You are in this, this scenarios that you are in because you are going through the experience to bring you to enlightenment, to bring you to healing, to bring you to uh, assisting someone else in their healing. Sometimes it's not about you, is it? And we want you to think outside of the box in that too. Sometimes it's not about you. Maybe it's about the others that you are associated with. Maybe you have family members or spouses or someone significant that is with you that is actually the one that you have signed up to, to be a participant in whatever is playing out so that they can have their soul growth, they can have their healing, they can have their moment in their transition and shift and moving. And so, uh, they are saying that it, it really is bringing in other frequencies of light as everyone is transitioning, as everybody is, is morphing into this 
this other frequency that is themselves morphing into something that carries a higher frequency, exiting out of the old wounds, exiting out of the old programs that have been stalling you, holding you, imprisoning you, and moving into a new version of self, moving into a free flowing version of self. And as you do that, you are amplifying the frequencies that are coming into the planet at this time. So for those who are not morphing yet, those who are still holding on to all their burdens, they're feeling it more intensely because you are healing and you are moving up and you are amplifying the energy. So for all of those who, who are doing the work and moving them, themselves up and out of those old energies, they're now making it so that the next, it is like peeling that, that onion layer, isn't it? And so you peeled your onion layer. So now the next group of people that are ready to do that can peel theirs and then the next group will come up. And we just want you to know that you are such a beautiful part of this ascension process. This ascension process for all those who are embodiments right now, everyone who is participating in life at this time is here for a great purpose. And as we keep evolving as humankind, as we keep loving each other as humankind, it amplifies and amplifies. And we know that, that we are warriors of peace over here and, and that a lot of times the information that we bring in is about bringing you into a place of peace, bringing you into a place of, of prayer and love for one another, even the darkest of dark energies, even those enemies that are enemies beyond enemies, they're coming from so much pain and so much hurt within themselves that they're projecting that all over you. And you might be thinking, how could someone like this be somebody I'm fighting for? And yet they are. And it is a beautiful thing when you can find the love in your heart for that darkest moment, that, that person that provided you with the most pain. And yet you can turn around and find love for them somehow, somewhere and bring yourself out of that darkness and bring them with you. And so there's lots of challenges out there. We're not saying that will happen overnight, but we do want you to look at the world and respond in love. Yes, there's chaos out there. Yes, there's violence out there. Yes, there's, there's disagreements and arguments and passionate people out there that are fully locked into how they feel and how they believe. And what a beautiful thing that is to have that experience, to be so passionate about something. And maybe that passionate thing that they have, you're just as passionate the other way. And when the two come together, it just does not work, does it? And so what we ask for you to do is we ask for you to just find your balance in that, find your peaceful place in that, find your way through that so that you can find the thread of love that exists in that moment where you're two polar opposites and yet you find a way to move into a loving feeling around that relationship. It does not mean you have to spend time there. It just means that you find the balance for yourself. It does not have to be an argument. It does not have to be a debate. It does not have to be you're right, I'm wrong, you're wrong, I'm right. It's not good. It's not bad. Find your neutral go into the world and, and be that energy. And as everyone is collectively finding the place of love, to be in the world with love and all that they can be. And this is, and Tracy is even sitting here saying, oh boy, what a challenge that can be, right? As, as everyone knows spots in their life, places in their life where there's turbulence, where there's chaos, where there's disagreements, arguments, and disgruntled feelings resentments, anger, frustration, when you can all find peace in that, when you can all find a way to love those parts, that is when the world heals. And the sooner everybody is figuring that out, the sooner we get there. And, and we say to you, this collective that watches this show, that watches this program, you are there, you know how to do it. You are a very special heart. That's what brought you here. You are a very special kind of energy, a frequency, and that is what brought you here, because you are ready. You wouldn't be listening if you were not ready to hear the message. And so we thank you for being here. We thank you for your courage to be kind, loving, peaceful in all situations, agreed or disagreed. And we thank you for, for showing others how to be the same. Jason, did we give you anything juicy to grab onto? You sure did. 
He mm. sure did. I not wait to hear what that might have been. <laughs> well, you mentioned Lionsgate, so you know I got it a little interesting when you said Lionsgate. You mentioned that energy was leaving for certain loved ones when the Lionsgate was happening. My question is, is there was there any energy coming in as well for uh, from the Lionsgate? There's always an exchange, isn't there? And yes, it was an extraction of a lot of uh, energy in the sense of loved ones or humans' uh, souls leaving the planet. Mm. As, as much so, uh, we have spoken of the children of the sun. Many of the children of the sun uh, have already started to come in. And, uh, ooh, there are <clears throat> many waiting still to find their embodiments, one might say. <clears throat> what we say about that is there are still a lot of you out there that that have not uh, created that opportunity for them yet, but it is coming. And there are souls that are coming in that are very high vibrational. They are going to shift the energy of the entire planet. Many of them have already started to come in. So there are children that are two and younger that we are seeing two and younger, maybe three. Most of them are two and younger and they are bringing in this frequency. They are already being uh, activated in that frequency. And as more come in, then it gets amplified, just as we are talking about the love frequency being amplified. There is an energy that will be amplified with the children. So that is one of the things to watch for. One of the things to notice is how people are reacting when the children are around. And, and so that could be something to observe when you see the small children and you you notice the adults are gathering around the smaller ones and how they're reacting to them that might be something to watch because it will elevate them it will bring them it, it is an activator the frequency that they hold will activate people and so it is important that the children um that they are around the people so that they can put off this energy that is turning on mm, awakening that is the word awakening those that are around them another frequency that is coming into the planet and it is a very important frequency and it is one that we all want to hold and move through this world it is the frequency to love your earth the frequency of loving the planet not just each other but love the planet take care of the planet mother earth energy animals trees plants water air all of it everything that has to exist in order for you to exist you are now falling in love with it you are now understanding it you there are some of you that have been activated so deep that it could bring tears to your eyes as you know that you are so connected to the earth to the trees to the elemental kingdoms to those in the nature force that <clears throat> the unseen what do they call uh, maybe a noceum type of energy you feel them you sense them around you now but they are you are part of that now you are part of enhancing the planet and what happens with this frequency as as those who have came here as volunteers to be activated in this frequency which is everyone listening today by the way and and from this point on whenever you are listening we say to you that you are an amplification of this beautiful energy and what happens is the plants will grow bigger around you the air will be cleaner around you the water will be crisper and cleaner around you the earth itself will will thrive and and the soils will be rich and so it is very important to embrace that energy as well to call that energy in now we want to look <clears throat> we do feel there is another energy one one that you might be mindful of if you are still around a large collective that is not in their awakened state it feels that there is one that that will keep people up at night is how we want to hear it keep people up at night it, it keeps them awake and what it's doing is it's their mind is racing because their mind is on things of of things are not adding up anymore things are not making sense anymore how can this be and that how can that be and and it is getting people to question it is getting people to question now we're not to say that you're not going to sleep at night we don't want to put that out there for anyone because we know your physical bodies do need the sleep but you might find your minds 
moving off into another direction. And again, we don't think we're talking to this collective here. So what we want to say to you is you might notice that about others outside of you. If you are in the workplace or you are around family members who aren't quite awake yet or, or still going through their process and they're in their beginning stages, they're going to be experiencing a lot of questions, a lot of things in their minds that they're going to be trying to figure out. And you may be placed in their path because you will hold the answers that they seek. You are going to hold the wisdom. You are going to give them guidance, guide them to a book, guide them to a video, guide them to a, a meditation practice, a yoga studio, whatever it might be. And you will be their beacon of light. You will be their mentor, so to speak. And know that you'll be put in the path of, of people that are looking for your guidance. And so that is one of the frequencies that's coming in is, is it is creating the questions. Why? Why is this like that? Why is that like that? Why is the government doing that? Why is the the politics like this? Why is the uh, information that's coming at me? Why does it sound like this all the time? Where's the peace? Where's the quiet? Where's the love? Where's Why am I working this job and that job and this job to try to pay all these bills? Why is all this happening? And there's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Okay, Jason, we will stop and let you talk now. You mentioned the shift and we were talking about Lionsgate. So did this Lionsgate help with the shift in any way? Mm, we think that we want to say yes to that question. We want to say that that everything helps when when people are collectively thinking this is a portal. This is a this date is a portal. These this consecutive week is a portal of energy that is opening up for us. And as a collective, every there was there was a large collective of people that were focused on the energy of this Lionsgate portal. And when that happens, yes, it creates a vortex of energy. It creates and stimulates the change, and starts to create a movement, a, a etherical energy that moves forward and starts a new process. Starts activating another timeline, so to speak, or or activating and setting up a frequency for everyone to follow and move into that is different than the one that you were in prior. So yes, that is that is a good way to put it is that it did help to activate these new energies coming in because it is all working towards the same thing. We, Tracy says, I had a client that asked me about a date. Is this date important? And as we as we worked in that session, we were showing them that you are here on this date. So we are on September 1st. And let's just pick a date. September 15th is a very important date. And we're going to tell you that. Now, September 15th is a very important date. And so as you are on September 1st and you are thinking about the 15th is a very important date. Now you have set that energy and it is now bouncing in time and space to the 15th. Now tomorrow you're thinking, I can't wait to get to the 15th. The 15th is a very important date. And now that energy is bouncing to the 15th. And you do this every day up until the 15th. Do you think that's going to have an effect on that day? Mm. Yeah. So you are setting a vibration, a frequency, an expectation to move that energy into that space, into that day to create something special. And what we're going to say to you about that is every day ends up being a very special day, a very significant day. Because every day you are doing something that is setting energetic frequencies towards the 15th. And so every day you make a change. Every day your frequencies, your, your energy is slowly and gradually changing to be an energetic match for something special to happen on that day. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. And so when you ask about the portal, you ask about, about the lion's gate, we say yes. You had a mass collective of people in the collective consciousness focusing on this portal on this, especially on the 8th of August, but all of those days around it were the portal as well. And this gate was wide open and amplified by the beautiful energy and intention set by the powerful beings that were, that were holding it precious in their hearts and in their minds and in their frequencies. So. Perfect, perfect. Is there anything else that's out there that's helping with the shift? that no one really talks about or no one really discusses? Mm. Well, we, we do say that the elements of the earth itself 
amplify, help, uh, assist, mountains, the, the minerals, the elements of the planet. Very important to hold the frequency, the energy, and to help the vibrations of the planet to acclimate the crystals within the earth itself. Uh, there are there are many things about your planet that you are yet to learn about its power, about its gifts, about its abilities. And when you all learn to activate it within yourselves, you're going to be able to see the magic around you. It's happening all the time. There are spectrums of light that your eyes cannot catch, cannot see. Those spectrums of lights, they are different dimensions. They hold, they hold so much for you. And as you evolve and move into your higher frequencies, and some of you know this already, as you go into your meditations, as you close your eyes and you acclimate to uh, knowing that you are an expansive being, you start to see these other dimensions in the mind's eye because the physical eye is not made to see them. The physical eye is not meant to see them as it would affect the way that you are experiencing the human experience. As you evolve, you will learn even more so how to use the mind's eye to see into these other dimensions. You will, you will see that those other dimensions do play a part in the ascension process of your dimension. If they were not there to hold frequencies and support and, and to bring in more energy for you to help balance the energy that is coming in, and to help nudge you, one might say, where do you think that intuitive nudge comes from? It is, it is coming from those other frequencies, those higher vibrations, as you have your teams of support from there. You refer to them as angels, as guides, as counsels, as loved ones. And yet they're, they're just right there in another light spectrum. They're right there in another dimension. If you were to reach out right now and just put your palm of your hand out and you were to ask for one of the beings from this other dimension, any of these dimensions, to place their hand over you and let, let you feel the heat of their palm or their hand over your hand, see what you feel. See if you can notice a difference. And see what kind of experiences you can create when you start acknowledging that they are there. When you wake up partially at night and you're still in that altered state, do you see the beings that are making themselves known to you? You can invite them to come and show themselves to you when you are able to see them, when you're in your, when your frequencies can be a match, which is usually when you are in that altered state of mind and you let go of the critical mind and you are in that deeper sleep state, but yet you are waking up and you'll be able to see if they have joined you in your room, you will see them. So invite them, let that happen. Be open to the experience and see, see what can be created with that. Anything with that, Jason? Interesting. Well, let's see. We do have some new subscribers. So I know we've been talking about the shift for a little bit, but is there a brief description you could tell us about the shift for the new subscribers and you are speaking of the shift to the new earth is that the one you're talking about yes or, unless uh, there's or or <laughs> you could tell us about what other shifts do do we have <laughs> well everybody has their own personal shift and we've talked about that those are in other videos everyone's realities are creating their experience that is a shift you can have your own personal shift and and to a fifth dimensional frequency. But we want to talk about the collective shift, yes? Yes. And so as, as one looks at the collective shift and where is it going right now, what's happening with it right now, a lot of you feel like, oh my gosh, we're never going to get there. We're never going, look at this chaos in this world. Look at what is happening. And we say to you that yes, those things are happening and there's, mm, if you were to rise above it and you were to look at the whole planet and then look at where the riots and where the the angry disgruntled people at they're in this little tiny spot over all over the planet most of you are at peace most of you are holding love and compassion most of you are hiding in your homes in fear maybe even but not 
the the collective of people that are out um, creating the chaos and we are not talking about the peaceful protesters who are there to stand and hold space and show their support we are talking about the ones creating the chaos why are they the ones getting the attention why are they the ones that are making it look like world war three is happening right good question and, and we do say that that is that is quite a tactic and yet if you were to look at it that is a small small percentage of the population compared to those who are holding the love holding the demands for a better world holding the uh, hopes for a better world the frequencies of kindness the frequencies of no more tolerance and boundaries and that does not make them violent if they are holding no more tolerance it just means that they are standing up for humankind it doesn't mean that they're throwing bricks through windows and and damaging property and spray painting things those people are not they are not the ones who are worried about they're they're there to create the chaos we must stay in the place of peace with all of it and as a global um, ascension what we look at is overall if you just close your mind and you rise above it and we ask the world to light up right now right here in the presence of everyone who is participating in this and in your mind's eye can you see the world light up because the world is lighting up more and more and more and we say to you that that this awakening is bigger than you think it is you get out in the world and you see the people that are not mm, they are not seeming to be in their own awakening process they seem to be still stuck in this this mold of what tracy calls the sheeple uh, this mold of the the followers but we say to you that this is not all true you are you're being mm, how do we want to say this don't believe everything you see because there is way more waking up going on than you than you know there are but there are many people who are not speaking about it yet because they do not know what it is they are experiencing and they are not quite to the place where they're around other people they could talk to about it and that's where we say to you again you're going to be guided to the people who are asking the questions you're going to say something that triggers them into going hey maybe they know something about this experience i had yesterday last night whatever and there is a way more shift going on in this planet than people are realizing but because the televisions are consumed with the covid things and the emails are being updated daily hourly with covid information and everybody is in this place of pandemic and um, trying to move through what the media is shoving down your throat but no in your mind that what you're thinking most the rest of the population is thinking as well asking all the questions why is it like this what is going on what are they up to why why would they think that this is the the solution to the problem ask a lot of questions don't just assume that somebody else has your best interest at heart and just make yourselves that powerful uh, reflection of no more tolerance for others taking control of your life the shift is there it's happening it's we are in the thick of it we are watching things reshape reform reconstruct you will not see it fully reconstructed for a while there is a lot more collapse that needs to happen you know this we know this we know you're getting tired we we want to send you love and support and so call us in take a little vacation from thinking about it go play playing is very important we know that your playtime is limited because the parks and and different things can be closed down right now but there are areas that are open for you there are things you can go do there are friends you can call make something happen do something different get yourself out of the perpetual heaviness that is and it's being programmed into you through the media and, and everything else break free from that go play because that playful energy is what shakes off all of that negativity all the cords all of the things that are not yours to carry go play go laugh go enjoy go be silly even if it it involves getting sidewalk chalk and sitting outside and drawing on the sidewalk and yes you can be in your your older adult years and go sit on a 
on the sidewalk and draw. We encourage you to do something childlike, something that embraces that silliness, that, that encompasses that energy of creativity, because that is some of the most powerful energy in this ascension process. And as you can break free from the monotony, from the, the heaviness, from all of that thicker energy and get into the joy. When you do it, others will do it, others will do it, it'll snowball, it'll snowball. And we want you to know that that is a big push to the awakening right now. If you want to accelerate it, that is a great way to accelerate it. And when people want to know, how can you be so happy when this is going on, you share with them, we have to be happy right now. We have to find our joy. We cannot be stuck in this energy. It will suck you dry of all of your all of your will to live. And if you are feeling that way, then imagine yourself breaking free from that. See it like a shell over top of you that you that crumbles and falls away. And you go put on some bright colors to wear and you go sit outside and you do something fun. Maybe you, uh, maybe you look for a four leaf clover. Maybe you are uh, building a sand castle. Maybe you are doing, as we said, drawing and coloring and being silly. Maybe you go for a bike ride. Maybe you go for a walk. Get out in nature if you can. You have to break free from it. Break free from that seriousness that is, that is trying to monopolize your time. So with the Ascension question, we say, yes, it is all still right there and it is happening. And it is, you have other questions about Ascension. We know that you had spoken about that before the recording started about different kinds of Ascension, yes? Yes, we talked about it briefly. Um, we talked about earlier how like, how one individual will have a session and speak of similar but different things about whether it's the shift, the great awakening or uh, ascension. And then a different individual, different avenue, different um, channel or physical realm, you could say they'll have like a different example of it. That's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And yes, and you said it very well. So we, we probably wouldn't even have to speak on that. But yes, everyone is putting, there are many collectives here and, and many different journeys taking place. So each of those journeys, there are multiple timelines as we've talked about before and each journey possibly has a different timeline. There's very, much the convoluted conversation around that. But as you believe for something that puts you on that particular timeline, it doesn't mean it's not taking you to the same place. It just may change the way that you get there energetically, physically, emotionally. And so there is no wrong way to do it. Uh, you can take whatever journey resonates with you as that is probably the one that you signed up for. And so yes, that hopefully that is clear enough for everyone Do you <laughs> need to talk about that more no no we we can uh spice it up a little bit i can give it uh daniel's choice but i was thinking of two other questions you mentioned um some things need to collapse and some things are still going to collapse do you have any examples of things that need to collapse or you could hmm. talk about what some of the things that we can expect after the shift? Uh, things to expect after the shift. Uh, there's going to be, well, the shift is not an overnight thing. So it, it is a gradual thing as it just keeps getting little better, little better, little better, and it just keeps snowballing that way. And so you can expect that you're not just going to wake up and, and you're sitting in the new earth, new world. There's the collapse that happens, but then as that happens, life gets a little bit easier, changes, and there is an, uh, an adjustment period, one might say. Just like when everyone had to start recycling. Yes, and, and you're recycling now, but now that means, oh, now I can't just throw everything in the garbage can. Now I have to pull the cardboard and the plastic and separate and do this and that. And at first, everybody grumbled about that. And now it's like everyone does that naturally. And if you see somebody that isn't doing that, it's almost like they're, you're going to go scold them. What are you doing? That's recyclable. Will you put that over here? And 
it is because we are now learning to care about our earth, our environment, and everything that is going on. So the collapse that is still happening, that is going to be the structures, uh, the systems, they're trying to put systems in place that are not functional, not working, and, and that is something that will collapse. Uh, the people must rise up and say no, and and be willing to stand their ground. It does not have to be violent, as we said, but it does take the collective to say no to these things. Uh, it is important for uh, for the people to be heard, and so there is there is the rise of the voice of the people, the rise of of the. Mm, the rise of that energy of the people that comes in, it will be enough as people are coming in and saying, no more, no more, we're not doing this, We, this is not okay. Then the governments will either have to comply and realize that they are not winning this war and if they want to hold their spot in office, they need to figure out that it is the people that are employing them and they will, they will comply or the people will overtake it and it will crumble. And so we are not certain which way it goes, but both ways will get you to the outcome you desire. And so there are- Very interesting. Yes, there are ways, there are always multiple answers to everything, isn't there? There's doesn't have to be one way. We do not have to see everything crumbling, dissolving, destroyed in order for another thing to thrive and work out. There can be multiple ways to get there. And, um, as, as we look at that, we do see that there are multiple ways for you to get to the fifth dimensional earth. Things that have to crumble personally. You have to let go of old ways of being. You have to embrace a new way of life, a new way of being, a new way of existing in this world. You have to be able to be willing to make the changes, be willing to do the work, be willing to stand up for your planet, for your world, for your lives, for your children. Stand up for the plants and the animals and the air and the water because without any of it, there is nothing. And so there is nothing to fight for. You will all die if you don't have these, these things to take care of you on this planet. And so it is important that you know that it is not just those things outside of you, the things in the world that need to change, but it is also you that needs to change. As a collective, everything going on in the world is a reflection of the collective. So as you each individually change your minds and change your way of being and change the way you look at the world and you quit throwing your garbage out the window and you start, as you, as you allow for yourself to have the experience of shifting into a kinder, loving place, those things need to take place. That needs to happen for the world to move into its, its evolution as well. So you, the crumbling is the crumbling within yourself as well as the crumbling of the society as we know it outside of you. People have to start working together. People have to start loving each other and, and supporting each other and taking care of each other. And if we haven't learned that yet, then the lessons will get harder, won't they? Because mm -hmm. that is a big one. If you, if you are not taking care of yourself, your neighbors, your loved ones, and you are, you are being uh, someone in the world that is uh, perpetuating the problem, maybe that is how we'll say it, and then you might have some rude awakenings as life will get a little harder and a little harder until you figure out how important it is to support the neighbor, to help the neighbor, to help the loved one, to help the family. We are not saying enable, we are not saying enabling the family, but you see someone that is struggling to open a door, you go open the door. You see somebody that is that is hungry, you feed them. You know, it is take care of each other and be a community. Be love. What does that person need? And you will know in your heart if that is the person that you need to help or if that is that is not the right situation for you. We are not saying that everyone on the <laughs> Tracy is like some of those panhandlers make more money than I do and so we are not talking about that but when your heart pulls you to do something if your heart is saying this person needs help and you ignore that and you walk away that is what we talk about you need to follow the guidance you need to follow the heart you need to acknowledge when something needs to be expressed and done and and value the life you're living value the life of others value the life of the planet 
that is where it is all going. And as it does that, then you evolve into your fifth dimension. Very did, nice. Did we answer the question? Yes, yes, that was perfect, perfect. Um, we have a little bit of time left, and uh, this is more of a fun question, but what is your favorite quote, Daniel? What do you like to say well, as a quote? <laughs> you know that our favorite one is the magic is real, uh, but hmm. I know that's Tracy's favorite, but do you have a favorite? Well, we were not prepared for that question, so let us ah. see if anything comes in for us on the favorite quote. Hmm. We do, we do kind of be drawn to the one that is as above, so below, and it is. It is one that could hold so many meanings for so many people. As above is source, as below is your earth, the earth mother or Gaia. Uh, as below, or as above is your soul self, as below is the shadow, the yin, the yang, the, the good, the bad, the dark, the light. So as above, so below. Think about how would you like to, you love your source energy, love the shadow as well, love what's going on above and below you. You are the connecting point for all things that are are being experienced through you. This is this vehicle you are in is such a magical thing. And we want you to just really embrace what does that mean for you as above, so below. And so what about you, Jason? What is your favorite quote? Oh, I have a few. I like to say go with the flow. And um, the secrets to walking on water is knowing where the stones are. Ah. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> so, so this is going to be on my Instagram page, these quotes. So. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we, we love that you brought that into the energy of the show today. And hopefully that is exactly what somebody needed to hear out there. Yes? And I hope so. Mm -hmm. And so with that, is there anything else that you need from us before we bring Tracy back in? That is it. You could bring Tracy back. Mm -hmm. And we thank everybody once again. We so enjoyed spending this time with you. We hope that you saw us, felt some value in this conversation today and that it can help you in some way as you are moving forward. Always, as we say, be the best version of yourself and show up for you. Show up. Know that you are worthy and deserving of your dreams and keep working towards that. As we thank you so much, we will bring Tracy back in. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was coming back in when the little phone started ringing. <laughs> so, yeah. Whew. How do you feel? It's really warm in here, and I know part of that is it's a warm day, but I think just running that energy was just making it even warmer. All that lines gate energy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was pretty cool to, to see that. Um, All the talk about the shift. Shift, shift, shift. We got a lot of shifts still to go through, but you know, it's how we look at it, how we choose to engage with it. We get to make those choices. How are we gonna react and respond? So yeah. So perfect, how are you perfect. Respond, Jason? What's that? When the shift hits the fan, how are you gonna respond? <laughs> we got this. I'm in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's good. Perfect in response. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, I think, you know, yeah, we haven't been in the most comfortable of places with all of the changes going on, but it has been a powerful time on our planet for people coming together seeing the value of their relationships, how many, how many um, spouses were put in confinement, you know, when they uh, couldn't leave the house and had to work out all their problems that they've been ignoring, right? So, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> so let it make or break you, right? But show you who you really are when you got to face it and you can't run away anymore. You can't hide from it. That's so. right. That's right. You can't say, honey, going off to work. Yeah. <laughs> nope, like, stay yeah, home. It's down here on the laptop now. Then get to leave. <laughs> so. Makes you wonder how many divorces happen, you know? Makes you wonder. Probably a few. 
But Only you know, that's okay, because that's where they need to over. be. What's that? Uh, like in one of the sessions, they said the contract was over. Oh, you contract know? is over, yes. They did their part. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the shadow work, boy, how many of us had to do shadow work over this last six, seven months? So, yeah, brings up the, it brings up the deeper issues, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, but if we work with it, we figure it out, we get to move through it, we get to have better experiences, so it's good. Yeah. Uh, were you seeing anything on your side with the lines gate or with the things that we were talking about, like certain things need to collapse or anything along that lines? It was kind of interesting because whenever I think of things collapsing, you know, it puts that visual of like buildings crumbling and disaster. Right, right. Easily. You yeah, can so I'm thinking that. collapsing and things are just falling apart. And then it was funny because I'm visualizing that as, as that's being said. And they're like, well, no, not like that. But systems need to fall apart and be rebuilt. And, um, you know, people need to start looking at what's not working in their lives anymore and let go of those pieces you know if it's a relationship if it's a job if it's a scenario that they're in whatever it is that isn't working for them anymore it's up to them to change it and the theme that does come up in these is take some responsibility nobody else is going to do it for you nobody else is right. living the life of jason just you are nobody else is living the life of tracy just me so if we're not happy with what what's happening, who are we living our lives for? You know, am I living my life to make everybody else happy? Oh, does that make you comfortable if I don't act like mm. that? Okay, then I'll change what I'm doing. No, that's not that's not the way it's supposed to be. We got to right. collapse these. Um, right. So this could be like more personal. Yeah. So. Just, yeah, that makes sense. Our personal journeys. We got to start yeah. looking at that stuff within us. You know, it's like. Who are we living for ourselves or everyone else that has an opinion about how we should live or society's opinion about how we should live and how are we structuring that what would you like to be doing that's interesting yeah i mean take five years you know what were you doing five years ago <laughs> yeah you know? actually you know what four years ago today i quit my day job boom boom so Five years ago today, I was hating life, working nine to five in an office that I was bored to death in, mm. and, um, really struggling each day, wondering why hasn't this changed? Why am I still doing this? And it wasn't until I took an action step four years ago today, walked out. Today, today. September 1st. September 1st was my first day. So being free first was the day was my last day of work september 1st was my first day of freedom uh, um, not having it was planned free. like that like hey end of the month i'm out yeah i gave them notice and at the end of the month i'm done and then i took uh, a week of vacation nice so nice I worked, I worked like a week and then i was done so what you going to do for this uh four year anniversary <laughs> i'm celebrating with you guys <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Um, I'm really excited to see where I'm at today, you know, doing these videos, um, the people, oh my gosh, the experiences we have. I mean, hey, we go to East SETI and what do we, we just get to have, I have conversations that other people are craving to have and I have them every day like it's a normal thing. You know, we talk ETs, we talk collectives, we talk subconscious minds, hypnosis, all the woo woo weird stuff and psychic readings and different things. And I got to do mediumship today and um connect with someone's loved one and and you know have fun with that and reconnect them with that with that family member the stuff i get to do is so phenomenal and um so i'm celebrating that i'm celebrating i i made it i i'm doing something that i love doing and i created that so nice very very interesting interesting hmm. so let's see what happens in another five years or four. <laughs> or four, yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun. I can't wait. So With the number four theme. Yeah. So yeah, I like that quote from Daniel. So as above, so below. That's a that's a good one. It's a good one. I like yeah. that one. You know, it's an old one. It's an old quote. But yeah, that's the one that popped in. 
you didn't want to ride with the magic is real. I get it, but like, uh, you must do your thunder. <laughs> yeah, yep. That one was interesting because you know it is. It's about it. It has so many different meanings. So it's whatever that meant to whoever everyone listening probably has that many different meanings for it. So there's even a movie by that title. Ooh, yeah, it's a little bit on the scary side. So, oh, I know. But, but interesting. Not. Yeah too scary but in a way it is yeah so. <laughs> not like friday the 13th scary <laughs> that's good is it like suspense scary jump out of the closet at you scary or like violent yeah, yeah a little bit of that okay a little bit like opening your mind a little bit like mystery mystery so. yeah we like mystery yeah that's good. i think only two people die so <laughs> that's a good memory i would not have even remembered something like that <laughs> i just watched it a few hours ago no. <laughs> i don't know something happened i liked the movie i smiled i laughed i screamed it was good <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> it's all fun so so anything come stand out to you about today's messages hmm the stuff that I was talking about, the shift and letting go, that was interesting. And then also what you were saying about like systems being collapsed, but that could be more personal systems, not like government systems, economic systems, which that is in the talks, you know, throughout yeah. different channels or... Uh, but if you think about that, our belief systems, right? We're creating with our thoughts. We're creating what we believe we receive. That whole scenario, right? So if we're willing to let go of the idea that we live on a world that has these old systems, these political systems, these government systems that we don't like, if we all were willing to let go of this idea that we exist in that world, what happens? Do we create the new world with that belief system that this other one doesn't exist? Ooh, that would be interesting. Right. And you was mentioning systems and talking about even political systems. And I think this was from the session as well, like where you were saying, um, knowing that the government needs to work for the people. If, if the government is not working for the people, then they need to leave, you know, mm, and yeah. people will take over which, you know, some certain books that I'm reading, it talks about the future and it kind of goes in that direction to where um, these political figures care about the people and they work for the people and they make sure they do the right things that is best for the people in these yeah. futuristic that books. a nice world to live in. Yeah. Now it's, that's a few hundred years in the future, but, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, dang it, are we going to have to come back? <laughs> So that's all good. Well, we have lots to look forward to, I think. It, but yeah, there's some work ahead of us. And some of it's our own personal work. We got to <laughs> let go of these, these thoughts and programs that are affecting us, keeping us locked into this reality. Again, we get to that matrix or that program, the simulation. What is it? Are we in something like that? Are we... Are we really able to change it through the frequencies of our thought? Is this some really advanced video game that we're playing with these these material bodies and yeah, yeah, in a way. Mm -hmm. and from, from what they say, some QHHT sessions very similar. You know, like this reality is not real. You think it's real, but yeah. that's how we built it. We built it for you to think that this is real. Yeah. For well, you and to I had think a everything that is real. Yeah. yeah. One of the gals I had last week, she, when she left, she had this lifetime as a, I think it was medieval time. She was married to this very rich man, lived in a palace and, you know, she just kind of lived a, it wasn't anything extraordinary. It was what you would expect with mm -hmm. that lifetime. She gets to an old age, she exits the body and next thing she knows, she's in a, a dark a body of a dark haired woman up on a ship, a spaceship. There was other um, different varieties of, of beings that were on there, human looking and otherwise, 
on the ship and she was trying to figure out where she was. She gets up, she goes walking down the hall. She said, I know I know these people and they know me, but nobody's acting like I've been gone for 90 years, you know? <laughs> so right. she, you know, she needs to debrief on this lifetime she just experienced. And she's realizing that the lifetime that she spent as that woman in the medieval times I think she lived into her late 80s or something like that, something of that nature. She lived a full life in that. And um, she realized that only maybe a day went by in that reality that she was in, ah. that she returned to. So how many lifetimes could we be experiencing? If, if Are we returning to like a, like is this the avatar and our consciousness is, is fused with the avatar, just like in the movie Avatar? Mm -hmm. um, is it something like that? And when we exit this, then we go back to the the other body that is hooked up to whatever it is that brought us to the avatar. Right. And then we're having that experience. And then if that if that version of us gets old and passes away, where does it go? I mean, there's so many layers. Oh, yeah. And you bring up an interesting point. Now, this is from Dolores Cannon's book. But if that, that was one of your sessions, like yeah. you had with your client... It reminds me of uh, this, I don't know which book it was. I think it was the custodian's book where they talked about there's sections of our solar system that is called no time zone. So like you could have a ship there experience no time ever passing because of the zone that it's in. So mm -hmm. you could go to earth, have your 80 years, 90 years, and come then when back. you come back, you would think one day it went by. Wow. Yeah. That's what the talking. soul is energy, so, you know, that soul can leave and come back and so on. So. Yeah. So, the, so when they say, are you a volunteer? You know, one of the things I could never understand is when people are like, yeah, I'm from the Pleiades or I'm from this group, that group. And I volunteered to come in and I thought, so how does that work? Do you have to die? Do you, you know, in that you volunteered from this collective over here to come in and do an earth life. So what does that mean? You, you, you leave that body, you have to right. die in some way, right? So that your soul is free to incarnate as a human. And I was always trying to put my mind around that. And then <laughs> like, oh, so it would be like the avatar thing. So their body is being reserved there for them and they get to return right. after they help when in this embodiment here. Yeah, you know, so you and I, everyone listening, we could all be returning to our our little spaceship alien bodies when we're done with these lifetimes, and that's that could be one of the realities that's happening. <clears throat> yeah, I just hope my ship doesn't get lost. You know, <laughs> be like, where did it go? <laughs> it got shot down. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll pick up Jason later on. <laughs> we're not sure what to do with you? <laughs> yeah, he'd be all right. <laughs> We'll come back in so many thousands of years. <laughs> Figure it out. Just let him keep looping down there. <laughs> He's doing good. He's doing good work. <laughs> funny. Anyway, so food for thought for everybody. You know, what do you think's happening? Man. Yep. It's very thick, many layers, like you were saying. Layers, yeah. So convoluted. So many ways this could be. And and again, like Dolores says, there's no they they're feeding us these little baby spoonfuls of food, of knowledge. There's no way we could, in the human form, understand or comprehend what what truly is going on. It's so deep. There's so many layers of it. So. Yeah. And I think another thing, because I had a session with someone, and this individual is here, but yet their body is still alive on another planet. And it has to be because they're connected to that planet. Mm. And I was like, where do you begin to find out how does that work? <laughs> you yeah. know, so it's like, you know, because in our training, it's like, you know, you go to the last day you're dead, last day you're alive. You know what I mean? And then you yeah. pass away. And it's like the question, you know, the answer was back was, oh, I'm still alive. I didn't die. And I'm like, wait a minute. How are you here? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. My mind is just so curious. So, about all 
you know, I think it's just that aspect, you know, of you. Yeah. And that's another thing we got to wrap our minds around is, is we're just one aspect of a much larger soul piece mm -hmm. you know, one aspect of our soul. There could be thousands, millions, trillions. We don't know aspects of us. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as the audience is going, like, whoa, gonna, uh, glad, I, glad I waited to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for making it all the way, you guys. <laughs> Yay. Bravo, bravo. Exactly. So would that be your favorite quote for, uh, for, for my little Instagram page? Which the magic that? is real. The magic is real. Roll I mean, with that. Let's roll with it because really, I mean, I experience it every day. It's so incredible. Um, You're living it. I'm living it. And what an exciting thing. And it's not to say that every day is blissful, but you know, I experience things out of this world and I get to have sessions with people and we go galactic, you know, we go look at things that it's like, how would you even know to make something like that up? You can't be making it up because that is so beyond anything you could make up. Right. And so right. it's, it's amazing to me. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. So the magic is real is mine. I'll stick with it. Done. My glue. Done. Typing it up right now. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so. <I love> it. <laughs> well, another successful video down in the books. So, yeah. Wonderful. So perfect, goodbye perfect. to everybody watching. Thank you for being here. Our, the support that you give Jason and I is extraordinary. Thank you so much for. Yeah, thank you. And share this video if you could. Um, share it on Facebook or with someone that you think might find it interesting. And also don't forget September 8th. We're going to do this cool. live thing. So if you have something that you want to share with the collective, bring it in. Bring it to the chat room. That's right. September 8th. So they show up on YouTube for on your page. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, it'll be on my page, Jason with QRE. And then um, it's going to be seven o'clock central time, eight o'clock Eastern time and Pacific time. Pacific. Yep. Yeah. And I know everybody's in all these different countries, but just work with us. <laughs> go, go Google it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We appreciate your participation in that. And oh, you guys are all over the world. So thank you all over the world. I think it's amazing how we're all connecting like this. And if you were to look at that and just, again, you would just see all these beautiful energies all over the world lighting up. And that's so cool. So that's, that's all of us working together. Yeah. It's all the young minds and waking up. Waking up. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for yeah. being here with us. And until next time. All right. Bye bye. Let's begin. <laughs> so, Tracy, is there any special announcements you would like to make? We're going to start over again because the dog is hacking up a lung over here. What? <laughs> That'll be a big No, breath. little buddy. You guys can see that at the end when he goes beep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh oh. What? You okay? <laughs> They're both freaking out now. Stop it, doggies. All right. Ready? No, 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 no. It's not that time. <laughs>